Hi, hello there. So today we're going to be learning uh, the basics of needle felting. So here are just a few of the materials you'll need. You'll need a foam pad. You could use um, an old piece of memory foam, um, packing foam, anything like that. This will be to protect your needle from breaking and also to protect the surface you'll be working on. You'll also need a piece of wool. What we have here is a sliver of merino roving and a small piece of Coradale batting. Uh, the Coradale is a little stiffer, and so this will make for a firmer sculpture, whereas the Merino is a bit softer and might make for a more flexible sculpture. Ultimately, the choice is up to you, depending on what's at your disposal and what you prefer. You'll also need some finger protectors. Uh, and lastly, of course, you are going to need a felting needle. You could use the needle on its own if you like. However, I suggest if you have this at your disposal, uh, maybe just using a needle holder. And if you have one of these needle holders, you'll notice they come plugged with the needle face down. All you have to do is take it out and change it from its face down position to the face up position so that the blunt end of the needle is in the narrower part of the wood. And you just reinsert that and now you're ready to go. Okay, so let's say we decide to go with uh, the merino wool. I'm going to pull off a smaller sliver here, so it's not to be working with a piece that's too big. This is still a bit too thick for my liking, so I'm just gonna thin that down a little more. And I would recommend that you start by rolling your wool, especially if you're trying to make a little circle or a square or something like that. Uh, I just find that this makes it easier to work with, but by all means, if you prefer to sort of tear it apart and use it in a pile, that's also okay. Remember when you're working with your wool, always put your needle in from top to bottom, straight down. You don't want to be putting your needle in at the sides or anything like that, because what that's going to do is put pressure on the needle and it risks breaking it. Then you could hurt yourself or you could get the needle stuck in the work and you might need to start over. So just remember, straight up and down. Just move your hand around. Remember to frequently rotate your work so that you are working into all sides of the 3D object, including the top and the bottom. When you're felting, you're going to want to pay special attention to felting the center of your object before you move out toward the edges too much. This is because that's the core of your sculpture, and so you're going to want the core to be pretty solid before you try to shape the edges, because if you get your edges all nice and firm, and then your core is still soft, then what happens if you look at this edge, let's say, right? Let's say we shaped that edge to be that shape exactly. Once we go to the center, and we start felting away in there, you're going to see that that edge starts to pull in a little. As you firm up your core, the felt from the outer edge gets pulled toward the center. And so that's why it's important to just make sure that your core is nice and firm before you get too cut up on the details of the edges, uh, because otherwise you're going to be struggling a little more to shape your work the way that you want to. Now, as you're felting, you'll notice that some sides are firmer than others, and you could check that by squeezing your work. So you'll notice this side is quite squishy, it gets very flat when I put pressure, whereas some of the other sides might be just a little firmer, like this side here. So what that means is you're going to want to go back to your squishy side, and you're going to want to felt into that side a little more. The goal here is to make sure that eventually the density is pretty even throughout. Eventually, as you're felting, you'll notice that you're shape is getting smaller and smaller. If you're happy with the shape, then continue at this size. It's fine, it might continue to shrink as you go, but the size is entirely up to you. However, if you'd like it to be larger, let's say you want it closer to your original starting size, you could go back to your wool and just take a small piece and you can wrap it around. Now, with the wool wrapped around your object, you can go ahead and felt straight into it. And what this does is it felts your new wool into your previous layers of wool, so that it's all part of the same shape. If ever there's a side you're unhappy with, let's say 
this is a little lopsided and you don't want this to be coming to a point, you can always squeeze that and then just felt into the shape while you're holding that position down relatively firmly. And as you do this and the wool firms up, it'll be pulling in on that side where you've put pressure. And as you can see, that little lump is gone now. Then you can even it out on this side by putting pressure again and felting back into the shape. This is how you shape your project into what you want it to be. And as you can see, as we felted the object, it started to create these little dimples as it's gotten denser. You could always switch to a smaller needle size if you'd like to get rid of the dimples. Uh, however, for the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to leave them as they are. Now, in order to felt into a flat surface, you could just take a piece of wool fleece or any other wool material, and this time we're going to use Cordell wool. You can just lay it down in roughly whatever shape you like. You'll mostly be shaping it by felting. And then you can just felt straight down into your surface. Now remember, you always want to be going straight up and down into the fabric. And this will avoid breaking the needle. Now with two-dimensional felting, you're not just limited to um, felting in the wool itself. Let's say if you have some yarn, whether or not it's made of wool or acrylic, you could try to felt this into the surface. And as you'll see, this here does not felt at all. And the reason being, this is acrylic yarn, it's not wool. However, what you can do is you can position it however you like, and then you could take some thin pieces of wool just pull that out so it's nice and thin. And you could overlay those on top. You could have it be transparent with a really, really thin layer like this. Or you could add on thicker layers of wool that would completely conceal the object underneath. And then that would add a textural element to your design. So now you can see that that object has been felted into the material, despite it not being feltable itself, and it's added quite a bit of texture to our surface, and we can continue to add thin layers of wool on top of that uh, if ever we want to fully conceal that object. We can also play around with what parts of it are left revealed, and this can become quite interesting. Now I find this is starting to look um, kind of like the side of maybe like a witch's head or something like that, especially with this added texture here, looking like a cheekbone or like the beginning of an eye socket. So I'm going to really accent that with some darker wool. And I'm gonna play around with what we already have here. This is where it's fun to remember that you can just experiment. You don't always have to go into it knowing exactly what you want it to look like. You don't even need to have a full idea. You can just start playing around with your materials, and you might end up finding something you like. And if you want the colors you're adding on to be less intense, as you can see, as I just did, you can layer on really, really thin amounts, um, and that'll make it, of course, more transparent, revealing the layer underneath. And so I realize this is starting to look a bit like a skeleton, like a little, a little jokester skeleton ghost rider type guy, you know? And so I'm going to outline that. So some of these areas here are a little underfelted. And you'll see that I'm leaving them unworked uh, for a reason. Because as I add other felt on top of it, I want to kind of be able to blend those. And by leaving it loose like that on top, it just gives me um, 
a little more leeway in terms of blending the new layers with the old layers. So this dark shape underneath now is really working in our favor because it kind of gives the impression of that hollow part of the skull at the top. So we're just going to really exaggerate that going into here where the cheekbone would come up and meet the eye socket. We're going to just make that a little more exaggerated. I'm not working with the reference, so I'm entirely basing this off of my memory of what little cartoon skeletons look like, I suppose. Also remember, this is still a test piece, so it's okay to kind of just let yourself enjoy the process and not worry about refining the details. This could always be a sample piece or a reference piece for uh, something that you create afterwards, kind of like a rough draft that you would have in writing, for example. So here where this white piece is, I'm trying to join these two dark parts. So how I'm doing that is by felting into the white part until it kind of shrinks and these two dark parts start to join together. So now this is what we have so far. You can really see the texture that that shape underneath is adding to this. Some parts here are fluffier because they're unfelted, but as we felt those, they will eventually flatten. Whereas this shape, the unfeltable material underneath, um, which was just a little piece of a crocheted acrylic wool, that's going to keep its shape. And so that adds kind of like a, um, relief sculpture quality to the piece, which is something that you might appreciate in your work. It might might add a little something. This becomes interesting when you have light hitting the object at different angles. It casts little shadows, so uh, it really does make the work more dynamic at times, if that's something that you're going for. So that's how you needle felt two-dimensionally.